In this video, we're going to take what we've learned from R, R2, and R3, and we're going to generalize to Rn. So we're looking at n-dimensional space, also known as the Euclidean space. This slide is my overview summary slide, which has all the concepts that we'll be covering in this video. We will start by saying that in Rn, our vectors are written as n-tuples. So in two space, in R2, we had a, a pair. In three space, we had a triplet. Here in five space, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five coordinates to represent a point or a vector. We have our same vector operations of addition and much like R2, R3, or exactly like R2, R3, we just add component by component, x1, y1, x2, y2, etc., up to xn, yn. Scalar multiplication is the same. If a is a scalar, we just multiply each component by a. And then we also have a standard basis. So in two dimensions, we would have E1 is equal to 1, 0, and E2 would be equal to 0, zero 1. And the idea behind that is that these standard bases would point in all the directions of our axes. So in three dimensions, we also had E3, which pointed up in the Z direction. This points in the X, this points in the Y. And they were all unit length. They all had length of one. So essentially what ended up happening is E sub I had a one in the ith position and then zeros everywhere else. So this is our standard basis for Rn. Each E sub I has a one in the ith position. So this is E2, so it has a one in the second position and then zero everywhere else. And what that allows us to do is decompose our vector x into um, our standard basis. So we would take x1, which is the first coordinate of x, and multiply by e1, and then add x2, the second coordinate, and multiply by e2 up to xn, en. We have our dot product, which is exactly the same as for r2, r3. We just, component by component, we multiply x1 times y1, x2 times y2, up to xn times yn, and then we add all the products up. We have the same geometric representation, which x dot y will be equal to the length of x, length of y times cosine theta, where theta is the angle between x and y, and then we also have this definition of cosine here. We have the same properties for our dot product. The dot product is what gives us the Cauchy-Swartz inequality, which says x dot y, the magnitude of x dot y is less than or equal to magnitude of x, magnitude of y, because here, x dot y, if cosine theta ranges between 0 and 1, at most, the magnitude of x and magnitude of y is equal to magnitude of x, magnitude of y. And then when cosine is less than 1, this product on the right will be less than magnitude of x, magnitude of y. And then there's this corollary, which is magnitude of x plus y is less than or equal to magnitude of x times magnitude of y, or there should be a plus in between. That's the triangle inequality. We have the same definition for length of a vector x, which is the square root of the squares of each component. We also have the distance between x and y is we would take the norm this square root of x minus y1 squared, x minus y2 squared. And alas, the cross product is only defined for R3. In Rn, it's very common to represent many vectors as columns of a matrix. So here, I might have a matrix of vector 2, 3, and a vector 1, 4, and a vector 0, 1, and I will represent each vector as a column in a matrix. And for now, you'll have to take my word for it. Later, it'll become more apparent why this, why this is convenient, especially if you've taken vector calc. Anyway, so to add matrices, you just add component by component. So the first, com first row, first column gets added to the first row, first column. So that's the 2 and the minus 1. The first row, second column gets added to the first row, second column. So that's 1 plus 1. And then I add my 0 and 3, I add my 3 and 0, my 4 and 0, and my 1 and 7. I add these numbers together, and this is my resulting matrix. 
To multiply a matrix times a scalar, so here I have the scalar 3 multiplying this matrix, you just multiply each term by your scalar. So 3 times 1 gives me 3, 3 times negative 1 gives me negative 3, 3 times 2 gives me 6, 3 times 0 gives me 0, 3 times 1 gives me 3, 3 times 5 gives me 15, etc. The first thing you want to know about matrix multiplication when you multiply a matrix by another matrix is that it's not commutative. I'm going to show you how to do this matrix multiplication using this formula here, which is very common. And then I'll show you an easier way of doing it without having to look at this formula all the time. But I do want you to know where this formula comes from. So we're going to say that D is a matrix we get by multiplying a matrix A, which is here, times a matrix B. Then the D sub I, J element, that's the element in the matrix D in the ith row and jth column. So D21 is this element here. It's in the second row in the first column. So second row, first column, that's this element here. When I'm looking for this element here that's in the second row, first column, then I'm looking for the ith jth entry. I is equal to 2, that's the second row, and J is equal to 1, that's the first column. So in the summation formula, the k varies from 1 to n, but the i stays fixed, and so does the j. So the first index of a is going to stay at 2, and the second index, the j index of b, is going to stay at 1. So you can see that is true here. So when we look for d21, it's the k index that ranges from 1 to n. So in the first term, our k index is going to be 1 for both um, so it, the k index is the second index in A, it's the first index in B. For our second term, the k index will be 2, that's the second index in A, the first index in B. And our last k is equal to 3, that's our second index in A, and our first index in 3. So what that tells us is the D21 entry is equal to A21, B11, so that's A, second row, first column, sorry, second row, first column, times B11, which is first row, first column. And I write that here. Again, I'm, in, I'm looking for my second row, first column, so I have my 2 times 0. Then I need to add that to A22, which I'm going to do in green. So A22 is here, second row, second column, added to B21. Again, in green, I'm going to highlight that second row, first column, and that's this entry here. So again, I have A22, B21. This is A22, this is B21. I multiply them together. And then last, I'm going to add my A23 and my B31. So that's A23, second row, third column, and my B31, which is third row, second column. That's my zero times zero. Then when I add all these terms together, I get 2 times 0 plus 1 times 1 plus 0 times 0, so I get to 1. And that's kind of a painful way of doing this, but what you'll notice is to get the ith row, jth column, you're going to take the um, ith row of A, and you're going to multiply it by that jth column of B because of the way these indices are. So in other words, to get the first row, first column of D, you're going to multiply the first row of A times the first column of B. So that would be 1 times 0, 0 times 1, and then 3 times 0. To get the first row, second column entry, you're going to multiply the first row of A times the second column of B. So that's the 1 times 1 plus the 0 times 0 plus the 3 times 1. To get the first row, third column, you're going to multiply the first row times the third column. That's the 1 times 0, the 0 times 0, and the 3 times 1, and then you add them all together. To get, we already did this one, and so actually I, I think I'll let you take a look and see how the rest are. And here I have my resulting matrix of A times B. I did 
the same thing for b times a, and you can see the two matrices are not the same. In other words, a times b is not equal to b times a. In other words, in general, matrix multiplication is not commutative, and that's something you need to be really careful about. Also, you can even look at b times c. If I wanted to get the first row, first column, I'd have to multiply the first row of b times the first column of c, but you see it doesn't fit because here I'd do 0 times 2, which is good, 1 times 1, which is good, but then the 0 has nothing to multiply by, so b times c isn't even defined. Last, we will be thinking of a matrix as a mapping. An m by n matrix takes an n-dimensional vector and produces an m-dimensional matrix. In other words, it's a mapping from rn to rm. It takes vectors from rn and produces a vector in rm. So for example, x is equal to 2, 0, 1. Here we have a vector in R3. If we take the matrix and then multiply by the transpose, this t is a transpose of x, so we have 2 times 2 is 4 plus 0 plus 0, and then we have 3 times 2 is 6 plus 0 plus 1 is 7. So you can see we've taken this 3 by 1 matrix, a ma uh, vector, a vector in R3, and produced a vector in R2. And also, this is a double check on your matrix multiplication. If you do a 2 by 3 matrix, 2 rows, 3 columns, and you multiply it by a 3 by 1, so that's 3 rows, 1 column, what you do is these two should match, otherwise it's not defined, and they kind of cancel out to give you a 2 by 1. 2 rows, 1 column. And last, this mapping is a linear map. So in other words, you can, if you have a matrix times a vector plus a vector, x and y, that will be equal to the matrix uh, multiplying vector x plus the matrix vector y. Also, if you have a matrix times a scalar times x, you can pull out the scalar. And that's our tour of the Euclidean space. Thank you for watching.